Welcome to Politics Welcome. Then Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. We are going to have a great show for you today. Buenos dias. Good morning. How are my peeps doing? Driving in those cars, getting ready to start the day. Remember, you are going to make this a wonderful day, not only for you, but for somebody else. In the studio, we have Howard Reynolds and Jack Van Beber. How are the two best radio activists doing in that studio this morning? Well, I'm still looking for them. <laughs> I think maybe they're out doing something else. He's the two best. Now you got the two worst right here. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> How are you this morning, man? I am doing fine. I'm just great. You know, like I said, I have, I can breathe. I can see. Hey, it, it's going to be a wonderful day because we are going to make it a wonderful day. Right? Right. I've got my coffee here and my trusty sidekick jack van beber and he's got a thought for the day okay come on in jack okay here we go think i'm thinking no this is this is gonna be a plea i've been reading your book so <clears throat> business has infiltrated government and the court is co-opted do not let them send the world into 50 years of war and turmoil and suffering for the people so the rich can dominate the poor Perfect. we need a, a government that's going to deal the people back in and get rid of this business ideology that's gotten into our way of thinking we're, be we're beginning to forget how to be humane human beings they're gonna have to start dealing us in okay i'm losing my place there but uh back into the equation of government and business or government and business are going to lose their legitimacy like they haven't already <laughs> Well, yeah. All right. Let's turn it back over to Egberto so we don't well, hijack let, Jack just opened the door for me to say something from a caller yesterday. You know, we have great callers at, from all sides of the aisle. We don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, uh, anarchist, or whatever. And this guy said something that my heart sank because there are so many f people who feel that way, right? He just said... Well, you know, in, in effect, I, 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 I'm going to paraphrase. In effect, he said, look, we just have to take it because there's always going to be the rich and that sort of a thing, right? It's like that sort of a resolve that we don't have control, which isn't true at all, right? The problem is that it's not that we don't have control. The problem is that we have been made to believe that we don't have control. So when we use what I call the Howard corollary, and the Howard corollary is get to hell out there and vote and vote your interest. Well, I added to his corollary and vote your interest. Then we really take power and the power that we should, right? So, I mean, uh, a, a lot of times, you know, when we talk, people like, yeah, that is good or I agree. If you listen to every single, uh, mostly when Republicans call in and we start talking, you notice that. Um, they and, and Democrats as well. You notice that there are a lot of times with all these policy things and these things that we all want, because like Jack always say, we all want the same things. Um, they'll say, yes, the, the, the Democrats would say, yeah, but we got to get folks out and go ahead and do it. And the Republicans would say, yes, but how are we going to pay for it? And how, how, how are we going to do it? In other words, they're, they're, the, thing, the thought process is that would be nice but it's not possible. Democrats says, that would be nice. We have to go ahead and pass policy to do it. But what uh, the, the, the people have done on the right side is convince people of the first most important thing that they needed to convince you of, that government is evil, that you are not government, and also that because you are not government and government is evil, these things aren't possible. So my thought based on what Jack just read is I wrote a paper about 10, 12 years ago called uh, two of them. The first one was middle class held hostage. And the second one 
was asserting your worth. And if you tie those two articles together, you could get this statement which says, middle class held hostage because you have not asserted your worth. So my entire goal in all the activism being done is middle class, and everybody would be middle class if we asserted our word. So it would be middle class if we assert our worth, they can no longer hold us hostage. And that's the thought that I want to get out of what Brother Jack Van Beber just stated. But anyhow, folks, the name of the, the title of the show today, as I was telling uh, <laughs> our t- last night, I only I, I was looking for a water leak two two uh, two days ago, so I only got like two hours sleep. And last last night, the body conked out at nine o'clock. Never happened. I never conked out before one o'clock or so, right? So it conked out at nine. So before it conked out, I I felt it coming. So I started writing the program early, right? And as I wrote the program, the title was wrong. So all of you who got the newsletter this morning that sent out at 5, the title is incorrect, but I corrected it on the online version. So if you go to politics done, and the subtitle is wrong too. If you go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, it's all corrected. Forgive me, but, you know, the mind wasn't working right last night at all. Anyway, the title of the show, Rick Smith Show executive producer Brett Pransky is going to be with us today on The Working Class. We taped this one here there in Chicago. Uh, this is a great, great guy. Um, he works on that show as well, and he does some of the hosting every so often as well at The Rick Smith Show. We also may play a clip of Chris Christie, who's at it again. We may get to it. We may not, depending on the calls. And the GOP versus Medicare. Yesterday or a couple days ago was the 58th anniversary, I think it was, of the passing of Medicare, Medicaid, etc. And there was a good contrast made as to what one group wants to do and how the other group wants to take it away. And what we're telling our grand brothers and sisters, do not be fooled into taking or writing your birth rights away. And our real birth rights is the ability for our government to truly, truly, truly serve us. So without further ado, oh, well, before I do that, let me just remind you folks that there are several ways to get the program. Of course, if you're tuning in at 90.1 FM, that's on the dial. Second way to get to us is via TuneIn, that application that you can download on your Apple or Android phone. Just go to your app store or and download the TuneIn app and search for KPFT. You can also listen to us at our website, kpft.org. Just click that that uh, listen button at kpft.org. But you can watch us too. Yes, 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 yes. You can watch us at our site, kpft, or rather, facebook.com slash Houston. Facebook.com slash KPFT Houston, right at our Facebook page. Or you can watch us on YouTube by going to politicsdoneright.tv. Politicsdoneright.tv. Without further ado, here is El Senor Brett Pransky. Brett Pransky <laughs> from The Rick Smith Show. How you doing, my brother? Fantastic. How nice are you doing? to see you. I mean, it's been a. Uh, I, I, I was. I, talked to Rick a few minutes ago and what I told Rick is hey it's been a year ago but actually it's not a year we did last year was in August yep so we're a little this, under a year we're under a year so it's like 11 months what am I doing seeing you after 11 months it's supposed to be a year man how you doing today Rick? I'm doing I mean great. Rick how you doing today Brett yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great having a great day having a great time here at NetRoot it's been a great yeah, show I know it, it's it's I mean, I, I, what I like about this one, the last one was the first one after the pandemic. Uh-huh. So you could see people a little bit more iffy in, the, in their behavior and the way they were doing. It's almost coming back to what net roots has always been. Yeah, I mean, and, but still, there's still some residuals from the. From yeah, the because we're still there's, there's still a lot this, of yeah. yeah, there's still a lot of masks in the room. There's still a lot of people taking a lot of precautions, right. and and that's a good thing. Yeah, um, but you know, it's it's a little more open, a little more yes. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, it's a little more, a little less reserved right. than, it, than it was, say, last year. You know, and it's a good thing. I mean, we have the vaccines now. And so, I mean, if you get COVID now, you get a little something. And, uh, 
you know, it's not not as bad as it was before. Right. So, I mean, uh, a friend of mine, I, I did my show earlier today and he said, Egberto, I'm here. I'm recovering from COVID, uh-huh. you know, so you're still hearing it. But the good thing about it is we have the solutions for it right now. And and it and it shows here in the amount of distri- exhibits we get and all the other things, you know. Yeah. And it was something that uh, I, like many people, uh, you know, suffered through it. Yeah. And, and it's no picnic, no. But um, but you know the the fact that I was vaccinated and, yeah. and things like that made it a lot easier than than it could have been. Absolutely. Um, so it was you know the the miracles of technology. I know. Uh, but hey, Brett, let's let's talk let's talk our business now. Sure. How uh, what, that year? How the in this almost a year? What differences are there? What what's your concerns? What are you happy about? As well, a broadcaster, as a broadcaster, one thing that, that I've noted in the past year, because we've uh, we've had tremendous growth. Right. Um, we're in uh, probably twice as many markets as we were this time right. last year. Um, and people have been really receptive to the message. Right. And this kind of, you know, because right now, for example, you talk about the um, uh, about the administration pushing out this this middle out economy right. message and thing. This runs right in line with what we talk about pretty right. much each and every day. So we kind of consider ourselves to be middle out media. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, seeing this message not only, you know, become a part of the administration's, you know, know, big push towards 2024 and so on. You know, see all that fall in line with what we do and see the progress of the show and see the the, the listeners and audience growing tremendously like it like it is. See the. The TV show on free speech, you know, becoming one of the fastest growing programs on their air. How many days are you on free speech? Currently, we're on three, Uh uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine Uh o'clock. But we're hoping sometime in the very near future to go five days to go nightly to to go nightly. And then hopefully, you know, sometime in the near future, we'll go twice a day. We'll go, you know, we'll have a a morning program and And an an evening program, program. too. Yeah, well, that that is fun. But I tell you, that's difficult. I'm doing two programs, just one on radio and one on one radio and streaming and one streaming only. It's a lot of work. The good thing is you guys have a larger team. Well, I have a team of one. You have a, a team of many. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a we have a we have a team of 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 a few paid individuals yes. and a lot of what I like to call fire breathing do gooders who right. just do it because they love it because they care. Yeah. And you know, it's that believe it or not, that tells you that you're doing something right mm-hmm. because when people actually want to volunteer to do this kind of work, especially this kind of work, it actually speaks well. Not only about what you're doing, but the people that you're doing it with. You exactly. Know? And the people we're doing it for. I mean, because a lot of those for, supporters yes. are the are the people who call in on the exactly. phone lines during the show. And, you know, we have we have, you know, regular folks we talk to right. almost almost every program yeah. because they're just so, so loyal about is, calling that, in and talking to us. Isn't that kind of fun when you when you when you have that 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 following that. The same. I mean, I, I like getting sure. new people, new calls, and the, the, you know you're doing something right when you get a, a constancy of those who call. But I right. also, every interspersed with that, you get that new caller that just get that courage to call. You know, yep. it says you're doing something. Oh, I love first time callers. Yeah, you know, um, even if we have to tell them to turn down the radio. Yes, so we, we always <laughs> have to tell them. To turn yeah, down we, the radio, uh, you know? but we love we love first time callers, but we. In this business nowadays, yeah. there's not a whole lot of us anymore who are going into a bigger studio, yeah. and, you know, and, and broadcasting from the local radio station right. or something like that. Many of us are at home in our right. home studios. Many of those home studios have one person in them. Yes. So knowing that the world is out there listening to what you're doing, so you need that yeah. that, that need contact, that, that validation, because yeah. it's real easy to think, well, I'm, it's, it's just me here, yes. you know, in, in a room talking into a microphone. It's yes. real easy to get that you know, get that feeling that, mm-hmm. that, that no one's out there listening and you're yeah. doing it for yourself. So the constant feedback and the, you know, the audience reaching out and, and speaking to us really, really validates what we do. And that's one of the reasons why events like this are so important because yeah. those same people are here right? and we get to see them face to face watching someone cross the room yeah. to meet us because they listen to us or because they watch a show on free speech TV. Yeah. I don't think they're fully aware of just how much that means to us because again, we spend so much of our time essentially in a box. Yeah. You know, you know I, I, tell, mean? I tell that story all the time. When I tell people, this is their program. A lot of times they don't believe it, but they don't understand that really what, you know, we get the, we, we have the passion, but we really get the validation from them. Mm-hmm. And the only way we know that the validation is there is if we have context. So in, in the case when I'm doing my online show, it's a chat that I'm interacting with. And these people are chatting away as they're watching the, the video cast on, yep. on the thing on the on radio. It's the telephone calls. 
You know what I did recently? Uh, one of our one of our uh, listeners said, "Egberto, you need to get phone access for your online show." So what I mm-hmm. I found a company called Ring Central, and I bring that right into the uh, computer system, and now we can have that people dial into the thing as they're seeing it online, and it, it is amazing because the feedback it brings us. Uh, the people online don't necessarily always want to do chat and you know call in. But for that person that you said something that, oh, you either piss me off or I want to validate it, they like to have that avenue. So you're right. There's nothing more than getting that validation from your audience. Yeah, true. And it, it, it sometimes causes a, a few issues here and there, though, as well. For example, um, our show is on, you know, every night at, at 9 p.m. Eastern right. time on the radio all over the right. place. And we're all we're always giving out the phone number to call in. Yeah. Well, uh, the the TV show on Free Speech comes out at, at, at nine o'clock as well, but it's sometimes a day behind, or it's sometimes a right. few hours behind. And you get a call. We'll get a call on live <laughs> air wanting to talk about an issue they just saw on TV yeah. that we're not talking about in the segment on right. on air on the radio that night, and it causes a little bit of of, of cross chatter. That's, right. You know, that, that can be it can be difficult, but like anything else, you know, we're just glad they're calling. Yeah. Well, I tell you, recently what I've started doing when when I when I use segments from my uh, on on air show is I try to cut those out, but it's a lot of work and it, it is it is a it is just too much work to cut out. Where you say call, so you, you got to cut call call and then yeah. keep the program. You know? Or when it's on the when it's on our, our TV program, you know, I'm running the number on the yeah. bottom of the screen and, and oh no, that's and, an issue too. Yeah, yeah, and we don't we're not going to stop doing that. Yeah, so. no, you can't stop doing that, no. right? But not only that, it's not a bad thing, right? Because a lot of people see the number on that particular day. And they're that they use that and they're going to call some other time. So that, 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 that is fine. That is yeah, fine. Also, that's true. Now, politically speaking now, sure. uh, what's your thoughts? Where are we at? <sighs> we're in a weird place. I, I mean, I know, but where are we, you know, it, what's your thought? I mean, we were a bit pessimistic, I think earlier on personally, I'm more optimistic. Where are you? I would say I'm, I'm leaning towards the, the, you know, the more optimistic side of things. Yeah. Now, anyone who lived through 2015, 2016, you know, to guard your optimism, yes. Yes. Um, you know, these days, because the unthinkable can happen. Right. Because no one thought that, that, that Trump could be elected until yeah. he was. Right. And many people didn't believe it days afterwards. Exactly. They, they're like, I'm sorry, what happened? There's no way that could have happened, but well, it did. For me, it was, for me, it was just hurt because I, I, I hate to tell you, I went on to Daily Coast and I wrote an article and said that that Donald Trump was, uh, what is it that Clinton knew how to do very well? Triangulating. Mm-hmm. He knew how to triangulate. If you, Clinton is a guy from Arkansas. He knows about triangulation. Right. Okay. And, and, and Trump was just playing that number and people looked at it and like, oh, it can't work because, you know, progressive, no, he's just talking up his, you know what? But no, he was doing what it took. And there's a particular segment in our society his message appeals to. And it, it really does. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, um, a it, Trump was able to tap into an emotion yes. and it's a real emotion because yes. there are things going on now that are, that are distressing. Um, you know, when I was a, when I was a, a small child, I lived in a single income household. Right. I had, you know, my, my father was the, able to make enough money to support the entire, right. the entire household because those jobs existed. Right. They don't, they don't exist so much anymore. Exactly. And we've gone from from one income households to two income households. Now I just saw a report the other day that said 50% of American workers have a second job. Yeah. That means if you have two people, two workers in the house, say a mother and a father, there are th- at least three jobs. We now live in three income households yeah. on average. And our life, life expectancy is dropping. Our, um, our standard of living has not increased. In fact, it's decreased. Wages are flat or declining against yearly inflation. Right. And so there's a lot of struggle out there. And struggle is where radicalism comes from. Exactly. It, 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 if, if desperation rises, radicalism will, will rise right. Right, right along with it. And that's whether you're talking about, you know, our country or, you know, countries halfway across the globe, the globe who don't like us very mm-hmm. much. Many times the radicalization you see in right. these companies or in these countries is tied to that same kind of desperation. Right. People who don't have the same access to, to, to good jobs, good lives, the ability to, to, uh, to provide for their families right. and, you know, and, and, and create a good future for the next generation. When you take these things away, people will go out there. They'll look for a sense of belonging. They'll look for a sense of community. They'll look for a sense of hope. And if, you know, if the people who are going to provide that to you are also going to ask you to do dangerous, radical things, mm-hmm. you're much more likely to do them. So right. radicalism here and radicalism halfway around the globe are, are I, all I, the same cause. I think Brett, one of the things we got to do is that I think that's why our work 
as not sufficiently funded as it is, mm-hmm. is uh, the, it's our only saving grace. Yep. I've, I've thought that for a long time. That's why I do it. I know that's why you do it, because there's a lot of other things that really one we could do that really pays. Right. And, uh, you know, but we understand also that, you know, we have kids, those that depend on us. We have to leave them something better. Yeah, what was I, I'm going to I'm going to misquote this. The saying is 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 going to be uh, incorrect, but it's but it's the, the, the gist of it will be there. The if there must be trouble, if there must be conflict, let it be in my time. Yeah. What we're trying to do is we're trying to we, we would rather have that conflict because I don't want to leave this for my kids. Exactly. I don't want you know my children to have to deal with a situation that I didn't spend my life trying to make exactly. better. Exactly. So yeah, there are a lot of a lot of places out there where you know where I could I could make my life more yeah. comfortable. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't want that. And you it, know, it, it, it is amazing, right? I mean, I, and I always talk about the psychopath, right? The psychopath is the person who revels in in somebody else's misfortune, and I, I find a lot of that. And it's not. I want to say on the right, but the, it, it's not completely fair because a lot of my brothers and sisters on the right, they're suffering. Mm-hmm. They just think they're suffering for the wrong reason, right? right? Right. And that, that wrong reason is usually someone who doesn't look like them. Exactly. You know, and keep in mind that is all, that's all constructed, right? I mean, that is, uh, you know, using the old, the old Jay Gould quote, Gould quote that we use on the air all the time. I can always hire one half of the working class yes. to murder the other half. It, it, and yes. and yes. this is all, but there's more to it than that. It's not, that's not just a, a useful tool to get one group to, right. to turn on another group. It's also a tool to keep them from coming together. Exactly. So what we'll find, and, and we find this everywhere we go, we travel around the country and we, we, we don't go from big city to big city. Yeah. Like, you know, we go from, you know, what we like to call factory towns, mm-hmm. those, those, those mid-sized and small towns right. where, there used to be a plant in town right. that was the, the main job feeder for the entire yeah. community. And that would spread out to all the other places. And the entire right. town was able to, was able to live, you know, off of that, that one or two major employers, yeah. all of those places are gone. Now those places today, the, the, the number one employer is the hospital. The number two employer is the, is, is the rehab clinic. And you know what is so funny about that, Brent? You said the number one employer is, is a hospital. And with, with what they're trying to do with our healthcare system right now, even that is in danger. Rural right. areas. Especially because, in rural hospitals. And, and, and the thing about it is the people who will save that area is, is the people we support. Mm-hmm. And they are, you know, it is something that I blame, to put it bluntly, a lot of the Democratic politicians in office. I, a couple of days on my show, my, my radio show, I said, imagine if every time a hospital closed in rural Pennsylvania, rural Texas, rural California, rural Florida, we got a band of politicians, Democratic politicians, who support mm-hmm. things like the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. Imagine if at the closing of those institutions, they stood up there and they say, brought to you courtesy of, right. name by name, all the folks who voted in a manner that created that reality. Mm-hmm. But we don't do that, or the consultants don't tell them to do that, right. and because they, don't, they live in another world. Right. And that's correct. And there's, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up another kind of uh, old metaphor where um, there's a story about, you ever heard of the, the story about the, the boiling a frog? Yes. The, I uh, use that all the time. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you take a frog and throw it in the boiling water, it's going to hop out. Right. But if you leave, if you, you know, put the, the, the frog in, in normal kind of room temperature right. water and slowly turn up the heat, the frog yeah. will sit there yeah. and cook. We're, we're cooking. Yes. You know what I mean? And because it's happening slowly, I'll give you an example. I, I live in Ohio. Mm-hmm. In Ohio, only 25% of the counties in the entire state have even one OBGYN. Wow. So, you know, a quarter, uh, only a quarter of the counties Are in, you, in wait, Ohio have right? That's correct. You know, most people have to travel, you know, at least 50, 60, 70 miles to get to My an OBGYN. God, I thought Texas and that was- dynamic is all over the place. You'll find this in, if you look for these numbers throughout the states, yeah. you're going to find a, a, a shocking number of counties in your state, you know, that do not have access and I at bet, all. I bet they are rural, mostly rural exactly. counties, right? Exactly. You'll uh, have, you'll have the, the, yeah. the major, the major cities, the counties with the major cities will have dozens. And then you go one layer outside of that and there is zero. None. Yeah. So everyone has to go to the city. So if you don't, if you don't live, um, you know, within you know, 50, 60 miles of a major metropolitan area, there's access. You don't get any, if you, shameful, if you yeah. drill down into like mental health care and things like numbers yeah. get worse, 
They don't get better. They get worse. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a real problem. And again, one of those things, as long as we're hiring one half of the working class to murder the other half, which is what, you know, keep in mind, there are corporate entities out there pay a lot of money to get that dynamic. I mean, you know, like we, we go to war with the right wing, you know, media all the time. Right. But the one thing that, that the public doesn't know is almost every single one of these guys uh, on the right doesn't believe a word that comes out of their mouth. No, they don't. They're just getting paid. They got, they got vaccines. They also, about the drugs that they advertise on. T- I mean, it is amazing that mm-hmm. many people don't realize that yet. But you know what? That's why we are here. We That's are exactly here. why we're Give here. Give me a closer, brother. Well, I tell you what, I, I'll go ahead and, um, you know, and, and pitch the show a little bit for, yeah, for folks who, who aren't familiar. The Rick Smith show is is a show by working people for working people. Um, you know, it's 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 run by a, a 30 year teamster, a truck driver, mm-hmm. a, you know, a UPS guy who might soon be on strike. Yeah. Oh, um, is it UPS team? Yes. Okay, wow. Yes. That's 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 who he's driving for. And, um, you know, in every day we, we concern ourselves with the, you know, with the, with the lives of working families in America, you know, what we get right and what we get wrong is all in the service of, you know, of, of making lives better for, for American working people and talking about the issues that American working people care about. Brett, it's been a pleasure to have always you on a pleasure. politics and always so pleasure. kind of my brother. Thank you. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Brett Spransky. Uh, from the Rick Smith Show. He's the executive producer of the Rick Smith Show. Anyway, folks, give us a call, 713-526-5738. Again, that number, it's on the screen, 713-526-5738. Let me hear from you your thoughts on the working class, your thoughts on what we discussed with El Senor Pransky. Come on in, 713-526-5738. I'll give you a couple of minutes before we jump to the next subject, but I would love to hear from you on these subjects. What's 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 your angst? Give me a call. 713-526-5738. Folks, many times we have a tendency to wait till the end of the show and then I kind of have to hurry you off and not really get the es- allow you to give the essence of what you're trying to say. So again, give us a call. 713-526-5738. Brother Howard, any comments at all on the, on what Pransky had to say? Um, well, pro- none, 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 none. I caught him off guard again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got something. Jack got something. Yeah, you okay, know, uh, come on in, Jack. <laughs> at first, you were talking about asserting yourself, your worth. You know, yes. You have to know your self worth, and that creates the self esteem you need to stand for yourself. Oh, I've got lots of self esteem. That's his problem. Way too much self-esteem. <laughs> well, you, you know what? I, I like people that have what they think is way too much self-esteem because it, it's a lot better than the opposite. It means, man, that we're not going to let some outside force control things. So, hey, I have no problem with that, man. So self-esteem yourself away, sir. Self-esteem yourself away. Uh, Seven, one, I do that every day. Good. I love it. I love it. 713-526-5738. Come on, folks. Give me a call uh, with your your statements, comments, whatever. If not, I'll just go ahead and go to the other subject. So let me give you 15 more seconds to see if that phone is going to ring. 713-526-5738. El número para llamar y hablo español también es el 713-526-5738. Repitiendo. 713-526-5738. Okay, I tell you what, before I go to the other video, then I'll go ahead and start talking about the Medicare and Medicaid's birthday calls. Okay, it turns out that uh, Medicare and Medicaid's birthday was, what again? A couple of days ago, the 58th anniversary. And uh, from the Common Dreams. Democratic lawmakers on Sunday took to the 58th anniversary of Medicaid and Medicare as an opportunity to celebrate how the popular programs have ensured low-income and older Americans uh, can access health care and how progressives have fought to strengthen these programs over the years, while warning that Republicans will take the first chance they get to weaken them. And that is not conjecture. That is not politics. That's their words. 
Continue, and it says, in a statement, Democratic Party noted that Inflation Reduction Act passed in 2022 without the help of a single congressional Republican, including, 35, including a $35 per month uh, cap on seniors' insulin costs, a provision allowing Medicare to negotiate lower drug prices, and a $2,000 annual cap on out-of-pocket drug costs for Medicare Part D recipients. Instead of joining the Biden-Harris administration in working to lower health care costs for American families, many 2024 MAGA Republicans, hopefuls, are not only campaigning on rolling back critical cost savings provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act, but also support ending Medicare as we know it. President Joe Biden and other Democrats took to social media to make sure voters could hear Republicans' plans for social services, which they have long derided as entitlement programs from the right-wing lawmakers themselves. Entitlements. Think about who in this country really feels entitled all of those who believe they are entitled to be rich on your back and they have the nerve to say that you wanting to have a good social security system, a good Medicare system, is you being entitled? Be for real. I'll pause and go to Mike and then we'll continue. Come on in, Mike. Yes. Um, yeah, I really, you know, I just got in the car on my way to work and, and I, I didn't catch the first part of the show. So, I, but I really, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, I've talked to you a couple of times in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what I, I don't understand. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old. Mm-hmm. So I can really remember a time when, the, you know, the gap between wages and the cost of living wasn't, what wasn't as bad as it is now. Mm-hmm. And, what I see is everything just keeps going up. You know, I grocery shop just like everybody else. It rent has gone up. Everything's gone up. My health insurance went up. My car insurance went up. I called them and asked why my car insurance went up. And the only thing they can tell me is, well, you know, everything's going up. Everything. You know, and I guess my question is, uh, because I really just feel like I, I'm a blue collar guy. And I feel like the working class and the you know blue collar people and 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 you know people who are poor are, are already there but i feel like those of us that, that are just blue collar regular folks are are being pushed into the poor house and and i and i feel like it's by design you know and i just you know i don't see any end in sight now, let me tell you, there is an end in sight, but it's going to be your responsibility and everybody like you. And one of the reasons we do these programs is to tell you, you can change things, right? You can decide if you want to accept lies and, and information that, that's not true, that allows this to happen, or you can decide to take it into your hands. Let's, let's, let's go from the, the start. You say you grocery shop, and every time you go to the grocery store, you see the prices rise, and the prices rise. But your wages, there's nothing that's protecting your wages from rising with these prices. You know that as a fact. That is your living today, correct? Correct. Wages are staying where they're at. Everything's right. going up except our wages. Thank you. And so you you see that, you live that. Am I correct? You're living that. Yes. Now, yes. however, if I go ahead and tell you we can stop that today, but the way to stop that today is to look at these rich corporations. Every time you turn on your TV, if you go to channel CNBC, that's a business channel, you will see all these these rich guys crowing about the stock market going through the ra- roof because our profits are going through the roof. Remember that what I just said. These wealthy people are on TV talking about their profits going through the roof. I want you to concentrate on that. Now, the next thing I want you to concentrate on is what is their profits? Their profits. 
ex their profits, their excess profits, as they're getting more profits to raise their wealth and their stock prices, that is their profit is that extra money that they're taking away from you legally. When you pay more for the eggs, when you pay more for the bread, that is them telling you, I have the right to make more money on your back. My question to you, Mike, why do you tolerate that? Well, I don't know what exactly what other than, uh, you know, the voting or what have you. I don't know. What okay, let's stop, stop, stop. I love that I you said know. that voting. That is correct. Now, who to vote for? Let me give you the, 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 interesting, right. the interesting thing. If I look at you and I say there is a sect of one party, meaning uh, the, rather the entire Republican Party and a sect within the Democratic Party known as a neoliberal, they are the ones that tolerate w what you just told me. They don't want to say to the corporate state, I prohibit you from making excess profits on the back of Mike. They don't want to say uh, the, to the employer who is also raking in a profit. And I'm not talking about little guys who are just trying to make it because they're suffering just as much. But to the big guys, they're not saying you're going to give back so that we can have a basic income to normalize wages so that people can survive. They don't believe in those policies. But there are these group of guys who've seen it work in other countries called progressives. And these guys say, no, we want Mike to have. But Mike, they have you concerned about abortion. They have you concerned about Hunter Biden. They have you concerned about uh, Trump's rich kids. They have you concerned about all these things that don't make your life better. And you are hating on your brother and sister as a Republican. Or you are hating on your brother and sister who is a Democrat. Because they have us all looking all over the place. Except to the evil ones that are taking your dollar away and making you work harder for that dollar. What I'm telling you, Mike, earlier Jack Van Beber brought up, brought up a story that caused me into saying, assert your worth because currently we are the middle class being held hostage. We can, we can unloose ourselves from that hostage taken. But we have to stop believing the crap we see on TV. We have to start investing in those who are telling us the truth and not investing as much into those who lie to us. Do you follow what I'm saying at all, Mike, or, or am I too yeah, nebulous? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've been listening to you for quite a while. And, you know, I, I agree with, uh, with the things you say. I don't have uh, any issues with any of that. I'm, I'm not a Republican by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, you know, even if you were, Mike, even if you were a Republican, you're still my brother, and I want to change. Mm -hmm. But I guess, Go ahead, you, know, Mike. That, that, you know, I can remember 40 years ago when companies had um, a what they called a cost of living increase. Yes. And it was yearly. And it wasn't a raise. If you had a raise coming that year, it didn't have impact that at all. That was totally separate. But we had a cost of living increase. And I'd worked at a couple different companies that did it yearly. You know, and that kind of thing is unheard of now. Right, completely unheard of, and 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 you know, I I I I kind of feel like I don't because I'm not a political genius by any means, but I just kind of feel like what's going on in the world today is a lot of it is is Republican generated, where they're flexing their muscle, and they're kind of saying, okay, I think they feel like they're putting a lot of us in a position where, hey. You, you wanted to vote Democrat. How are you liking it? How do you like the cost of living? How do you like like what, what you're paying for insurance? How do you like all that? Maybe you should, should, should vote for us. But in reality, I think they're the ones who perpetrate all of this. Exactly. No, no, no you, you nailed it. Mike, you nailed it. But uh, there's one thing that I want to correct you on. You said, I am not a political genius. The, the, the thing about it is, Every American citizen should consider themselves a political genius because they are the ones living in society and they are the ones who know things. Earlier you heard me say 
that uh, those guys, uh, that why is it that, Dem- in, in the interview I did with Brett Pransky, I said, why is it that Democratic politicians, for every hospital that closes, they don't have a big news conference and say, courtesy of Republican policy, which is what I wish they would, I wish we would take rural people very seriously. I wish we would have the respect of, that we would respect the folks in rural areas to walk into rural Texas, rural Mississippi, rural Alabama, rural New York, and every time things that the, pol- the Republican policy, which negatively affects these people more so than folks in the city, I wish we would go into these areas and say, hey guys, brought to you courtesy of these policies. But you see the consultants in Washington, D.C. That, con- that are the consultants for both Republicans and neoliberal Democrats, they're not out there doing that, brother. They're not doing that. They're not doing their jobs because they don't know. They're elitists. You know who is the genius in our system, brother Mike? You are. You are living it. So we first, when I say have to assert our worth, those aren't words. That's reality. You are the ones going out to work every day that makes our economy run. Those fat cats in the tower who are there collecting their monies, they're collecting the money you have made for them. There's nothing inherently more geniotical on them than you. So assert your worth. Brother Mike, I got another call. Anything else you'd like to say, sir? No, that was it, man. I appreciate you taking my call, and have a great day. You have a wonderful day, uh, Mike. Let's go ahead and go to Jeremy. Come on in, Jeremy. Hey, th- thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I, I, I called because I, I just wanted to share what I did uh, because I have all the same uh, issues that Mike has and the same concerns. In 2013, I, I joined a union. Yes. And uh, it's the best thing I ever did. Because uh, I get my COLA increases by contract. And uh, and uh, I think that uh, more people are thinking about joining unions, but really don't know how. And I think that's uh, something that uh, people can share. If you can just look on the internet at Workplace Organizing Committee, uh, Google that. There's a lot of ways out there that you can, uh, and a lot of uh, training out there that you can get and help that you can get if you want to form a union in your workplace. And I think not enough people know about it or are confident enough about it just to go look it up. Jeremy, thank you so kindly for making that statement. I am a one. I think every employee, in my humble opinion, every employee should be in a union because you know what? When when folks talk about you know again the the way the plutocrats have done all along, Jeremy is everything that is good for us. They've tried to turn it into a negative. Government is bad. Unions are bad. They want, they want you to do that, but what they don't tell you, in the process of saying government is bad, unions are bad, in effect, they're saying you are bad because government, one, is we the people. Unions are we the people banding together for our better good. So you have to realize that whenever you have the plutocrats through their advertising, through their misinformation, telling you that government is bad, telling you that unions are bad, and trying to point out all the things that work badly in, let's say, government or work badly in unions, what they're trying to tell you is you are inherently bad. When the reality is all the bad things in this country, all the bad things in this world are done by the bad people in corporations. Corporations aren't inherently bad. There are reasons to have corporations, but the people in corporations have now used it as a bludgeon, used it as a means to extract from us all. So, sir, you're absolutely right. Unions are a good thing. Everybody should form a union, and collectively then, they, the, the corporations can't selectively uh, slash us because... They think we stand alone. You see, they want rugged individualism for you because they can control an individual. But when... Uh, Welfare is terrible. Yes. Most people don't realize that we're already... uh, If you consider cash payments from our governments to corporations, we're already a socialist nation. It's just not okay for our government to transfer our wealth back to us. It's okay for them to transfer it. Wow. Exxon Mobil, but it's not okay for them to transfer our wealth back to us. 
And that Jeremy, you get it. Have... Jeremy, yeah. you get it, brother. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I it, it's hard because I'm, I'm 51 years old. And when people introduce themselves to me or I introduce my people and we start talking about work, I, I don't say that I, I'm in the merchant marine. I look them in the eye and they say, I'm in the ship drivers union Yeah, because uh, I'm proud to be in a union. And uh, I, I think they should be too. And people look at me and they shake their head in disgust. And even some of my peers they that that are non-union, they don't understand that they they think I'm crazy that I would uh, seek to stay within my union employment and do what I have to do to uh, to. Uh, I live where I live because I'm close to to a union hall, and we don't have that many around the country. And that I would limit myself that way, but it's important enough to me. Because that's how I feed my family. Jeremy, and, I am uh, so happy that at 51, young age and others, that you see that now we have to, again, uh, remember what the plutocrats did. And this started, I don't know how often you listen to my show, but I talk about the Powell memo. It was written by Lewis Powell, a Democrat who eventually Nixon assigned to the, uh, raised up to the Supreme Court. He wrote a document known as a Powell memo in which he was, in which I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. This document says, look, people, Americans are becoming too intelligent and they're starting to ask the business class, why am I working so hard so that you make the profit? That's in effect what the document said. And then the document said, what we need to do is infiltrate the schools, the churches, and everything else to tell these people, to, to fool these people so that they stop thinking that unions are good, so that they stop thinking that activists are good. And they have been fairly successful. Every single person who looked at you when you tell them, I am a union steward or I am in the union, and they look down at you because it's like, I can't believe you're in a union. They, it's almost like they're saying, I am so happy to be a slave. Why don't you come join me? Right? When you are in the union, you have empowered a collective to support the, your needs. Those people who do not believe in unions actively under, uh, actively d have been convinced that it's okay to be a slave. Jeremy, I'm proud that you are proud of being a union person. Please don't let those who speak that down, don't, don't hold it against them. Because remember, they were programmed uh, by, by the plutocrats using very good psychological means. Just try to be humble with them. Just try to be understanding with them. Try to be caring with them and slowly work them into their sanity. That's all I'm going to tell you. Anything else, Jeremy, you'd like to say? No, I just want to say thanks for your good work, fellas. Have a great day. You have a great day, sir. Anyway, folks, um, 713-526-5738. 713-526-5738. Before Jeremy and Mike called, I was into talking about the 58th anniversary of Medicare and Medicaid and uh, that the Democrats uh, earlier this week were celebrating the 58th anniversary and we're speaking about the intents of intent of many on the other side of the aisle and what they intend to do. We know from the article, we all know where the real issues is in terms of long-term debt for the United States. Former Vice President Pence, who ran in for president in 2024, was, say, was seen saying in an interview, we've got to put Social Security and Medicare on the table in the long run. So you see, the whole family of on the uh, on on the republican side believe not that they have to cut or 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 it cause for all those people who are having a windfall profit on your back they don't want them to pay more taxes to keep social security and medicare solvent they want you to cut something that isn't near enough already that's what they want to do they want to cut medicare and medicaid and it's not that's you know you're lying they are even saying it out of their mouths. And it's amazing. You notice that what Jeremy just said. Jeremy just said, I love being in a union, something that does good. And some of the people he speaks to, they look down at him like, how can you be in a union? They have been programmed for that false belief. The same with Medicare and Medicaid. You are Those of you who are voting for Pence or Trump or any one of these guys, they're not hiding it. They're saying, we're going to control the budget by taking the money away from you. Money that you've earned. 
money that society created. We're going to take it away from you. But some people are still going to run to vote for these guys. Some people will continue to run and vote for the guys who are going to take bread out of the mouths of their babies, milk out of the mouth of their babies, money out of your pocket that you could use to send your kids to college or trade school or help them form a business. In other words, the video clip from former Donald Trump was saying, in another video clip from uh, President Donald Trump, was saying, saying, cut in Medicare and Social Security. This is what he said. Cut in Medicare and Social Security are some of the easiest solutions to the national debt. Trump, another 2024 candidate who's 20, 37 points ahead, DeSantis said. Think about that. He's saying, hey, I can balance the budget easily. I can reduce our debt easily. Just screw the working class. Just screw the middle class. I can do it. I can do it because I can. The Republicans are openly admitted they want to steal your Social Security and Medicare and then force you to work till you drop dead, said Bill Pascrell, who posted a video compilation of several Republicans discussing their plans to raise the retirement age. So you see, a couple of days ago when we were talking about Social Security, a caller said, how many years do you live after Social Security? And I said, maybe 10 for some, 20 for others, 30 for others. And some people die as soon as they retire. Now they want to raise the retirement age. You know why they want to raise the retirement age? Because you're going to die quicker. You work harder. You, you use up your body more. And as soon as you finally use up all of your body and you want to get your retirement, who cares? The Social Security not going to have to pay you much because, well, they, you know, if you follow what they want, they won't have much to pay you. And then you die. And then you die. That is, you know, that is what, that is what it's all about. You know, Again, uh, Jeremy said, uh, not Jeremy, Mike said, uh, individual ruggedness and socialize for corporations, right? Just after securing a deal with the White House in late May to raise the nation's arbitrary debt ceiling in exchange for painful cuts to non military federal spending, such as food aid, U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republican from California, wasted no time in making clear that cuts were only the first step in the GOP agenda, and that mandatory spending such as Medicare and Social Security would need to be slashed. Anybody wants to call it real quickly, 713-526-5738, una vez más, 713-526-5738. You need to call now if you want to say something, otherwise we're going to be close to the end of the show. In June, a panel of 175 House Republicans released a budget proposal that would raise the retirement age voted in June to approve a budget proposal that would raise retirement age for Social Security benefits and enact a premium uh, model for Medicare. Think about that. Replacing the program's guaranteed health care coverage with a subsidized voucher that senior citizens could use to either purchase private health insurance or Medicare plan. Why the hell would you want to purchase private health insurance? That isn't going to give you what, uh, it, that has to pay an executive, has to pay a president, has to pay wages, has to pay uh, shareholders. Why would you want to go to private health care as opposed to have the government run it, which has none of those costs, which means all those costs would go into health care. You know why? Because, again, the thuggish nature, the thuggish nature of many in the private sector. There are certain parts of this private sector, or there are certain portions of our economy that do not belong in the private sector. Healthcare is the major one. Of course, energy, etc., but we'll, take, we'll talk to, about that, or we'll keep that for another day. Anyhow, folks, uh, the other videos that I have for the show today, you can always go to our uh, site, the newsletter. It's all linked in the newsletter. Go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, and see that. I see I got a quick call. Just let them in real quick because we're kind of out of time. Uh, let, let's go ahead and bring caller. Uh, yeah, come on in. Come on in, Roberto. 
Good morning, Egberto. How are you? Compa I am doing Pita. fine. Talk to me, my brother. This, uh, this, this is just, uh, you know, I'm telling you like that, Egberto. Um, since Kevin McCarthy wants to do uh, all these cuts and do away with Social Security, uh, how about reimbursing uh, people like myself who have worked all these years? I'm only 58. Um, nowhere close to retirement yet. How about reimbursing us for all the years of labor that they have taken up money out of us? And then, you know, if they decide then for future uh, generation to just do away with social security, how about reimbursing uh, individuals like myself who have worked all these years since they consider it a uh, entitlement, but it's something that's been taken out of our uh, uh, income every paycheck. Uh, hey, Roberto. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, but they won't. Guess why they won't? It's already spent. You know, everybody think that Social Security is some locked box that your money was spent, put into. It's not really. The truth of the matter is we, those who pay Social Security today are paying, uh, are paying for those who are on Social Security today. It's a little lie they never tell us, but that's how it really works, brother. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're absolutely right, though. But no, I, I tell you what, what we have to do, in my humble opinion, Roberto, is the it's, it's following. Uh -huh. We cannot allow these thugs to continue. We will keep our Social Security. We will keep our Medicare. We will keep our Medicaid. We will keep all these programs that makes life better for people and uh, to, to counteract those who don't. So what we are going to do is not give them the option. We're going to vote them out, as Howard would say, Roberto. Amen to that. I, another thing, look, uh, 40 years ago, I've been here in the United States for 41 years. If you had told me 40 years ago that the United States will be in a position and in the state that we're in today, I would have laughed at that. I would too, my friend. You know, I came here about the same time. I, I, look, I am, by the way, where are you from? Uh, from Panama, too. I'm from Panama. Oh, yo soy panameño también, hombre. De la mismo, de mismo lugar. Hey, hey, love to hear you, my voice, my man. Hey, um, I got to go. We are out on time completely, my brother, but here's the deal. Thank you for calling. I would have never thought the same. Panameño, viva Panama. Viva Panama, arriba. Arriba, mano. All right. Anyway, folks, look, we're coming to the end of the show. Let me go ahead and say, hey, uh, Senor Howard and Jack, 15 segundos, 15 seconds. Uh, mighty good show, Egberto. Stay tuned for Democracy Now! Jack's got some comments. Yeah, uh, they are pushing you to the poorhouse. So join the poor and vote and vote. watch the way you spend your money. You can slow down your money and slow down their pocketbooks. Thank you. Said, scallywag. Jack, thank you so kindly. My name is Egberto Willis. I want to thank Jack and Howard for the great work in that control room. Muchísimas gracias, mi hermanos. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. <laughs>